Hello everyone and welcome to episode 19 of Reconstructing Cave Story. In this episode we're going to do a little bit of debugging. Um, so first of all let me show you guys what's going on. First of all it's working right now but if I click and drag and I move the window around and okay I'm done dragging. Oh my goodness I get a crash. What's going on? Expression vector subscript out of range. Well, let's retry to debug the application. So let's put in a breakpoint so that we can look at what's going on. Well, this isn't helpful. I don't know what this code is. So let's look at the next level up in the call stack, which is who called this code that's breaking. Okay, this is the vector stuff. I'm sure the vector is working. The vector class is working. So let's go up to our code where the problem really probably is. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, it's in this line 73, collision tiles dot push back, collision tile, row call. Okay, so here's where we're doing a vector um, subscript or looking into a vector. So let's look at these row and call values to see what's going on inside of there. So what's our row value? Our row value is, if we look down here, a row value is 15, which is a problem because there's only 15 rows and this is zero based, remember? So let's look at our, what our last row, our last row is 48, so that's huge. That's way past the bottom, the bottom of the screen. So yeah, let's look at where our rectangle is getting created and that should be a couple calls back at most, yeah, here's where we are creating our bottom collision rectangle given delta. And our delta is huge, it's 1,207, and that's in pixel units, or yeah, that's in pixel units because we're using, I've got a 32 by 32 game to pixel is one to one ratio. So yeah, that's the right, that's really huge. And it looks like we know our delta is getting calculated by velocity times elapsed time and our elapsed time is four seconds so what's going on here why is this happening this is happening because SDL is not SDL is pausing its execution pausing our, the execution of our application of our updates while its window is being resized and moved and so this is a window specific bug um, and when, when it pauses execution, it does not pause its SDL get ticks, which is what we're using to get the time. So our delta is based on this elapsed time in milliseconds, which gets to be really huge if we don't have updates every 60th, every 1 60th of a second. So we need to ensure that this doesn't happen. This doesn't get out of control like this. So let's look at the notes I have. Um, not here, but here. So there's a couple ideas. We could create a, fr a frame time cap, which is, as you guess, what we're going to do. Or we could watch for Windows events and keep track of a pause timer and all that kind of stuff. And that's like, yeah, that's kind of an ideal situation where we see okay has windows taken control of this window and has sdl paused execution and if so then we just keep track of the amount of time that has elapsed um, since that event took over and since windows took over on sdl so we could do that and that would be ideal but it's actually way more complicated to figure out if um, a windows event has taken over and it's very it's actually unreliable. So we're gonna do something a, a lot easier and a lot more reliable, which is create a frame time cap. And what this is gonna do is all, it's just going to make sure that a frame does, a frame's time is never longer than say, I don't know, five sixtieths of a second. So that'd be the equivalent of what we would expect five frames to be. And so that's what we're going to do in this episode is just implement that really quickly. So let's go into our game class and game.cc and just create another constant and it'll be in milliseconds and we'll call it K 
max frame time. And this will just be equal to five sixtieths of a second. And since this is in milliseconds, uh, seconds are 1,000 milliseconds. And then just divide that by 60. So now let's use it. Um, and we'll use it down here right where we call our update method. So um, right now we're calling with current time in milliseconds minus last update time. Let's store this in a constant. Call it elapsed time. And instead of returning uh, elapsed time in milliseconds, let's return the m minimum of, um, so standard min of elapsed time. And what else do we want? We want to use our k max frame time. So we want to use the minimum of those two. And this should fix that problem up. Um, yep. Yeah. I'm happy with that. So let's see, let's compile this and run it, make sure it all works. So I'll drag it into place and I'm moving it and I'm holding it and I let go and I don't have any bugs. So let's see, let's kind of watch it skip. This is gonna look weird because, no, actually I'll have it jump. So I'm gonna jump by pressing Z and then I'll move it. So it's, you can see it's freezing, as I said, so it's halting execution. So let's see how much it skips. So he, he skips up a little bit, but that's what we want. And the reason we're doing it this way, we're having, we're passing in our update time instead of um, just doing a consistent 1 60th of a second, which is a, another way of doing it and would work pretty well too. This is just another way of thinking about things. Um, but the reason we're doing this is so that we can keep um, we can keep timing for people who there there are people who are really interested, especially for platformers, in keeping a really solid time so that they can time things like jumps. And if uh, you're running it on an old computer or the processor spikes all of a sudden or something like that, then I mean the frames will skip, but the timing won't be off. So yeah, that's the reason we're doing it this way. And so. This just keeps it nice and working when stuff like Windows gets in the way. So yeah, that's it for this episode, guys. Thanks for watching, and happy developing.